Okay. Um, so the first thing I'd like to do is find my laser pointer. Um, is uh, thank my co-authors, Dr. Bauer, uh, Dr. Balantano, Dr. Rao, Dr. Lechman, and Dr. Quintana, who have been helping me with this. Um, I'm sort of the experimental junkie in the group, and uh, they cover most of the uh, um, modeling side of things. <clears throat> so I'm actually going to start at the bottom of this slide and let you know what the goal of this uh, whole project is, and that's to develop a predictive model for propent placement. Um, based off of some laboratory scale hydraulic fracture and propent tests um, so that we can try to better inform uh, propent selection and concentration so that we can uh, then increase well production. Uh, so a quick outline, uh, we're going to go through a little bit of preliminary testing, uh, the modeling of the preliminary tests including mesh generation and flow results, uh, the fracturing system that I'm using and then the experimental results of uh, some fracture testing conclusions and future testing. Uh, the one thing I will say is that this work is still in progress, so um, bear with me once we get uh, into the fracturing system and some of the uh, actual fracture tests. So for the preliminary tests, uh, we went and took some shale, which I'm not at liberty to tell you where it came from, um, and uh, distributed a monolayer of propent into the fracture, uh, reassembled the shales, and then performed a series of flow tests uh, where we put them underneath confining and differential stress um, at 75 degrees C and flowed water through the uh, sample. And then <clears throat> those tests were paused, the specimen was taken out, we sent it to be CT scanned, we put it back in, um, sort of rinse and repeat in that method so that we can watch the evolution of the fracture um, <clears throat> with the, uh, with the uh, microcomputed tomography so that we can see what's happening uh, to the propent and what's happening to the shell walls. So here's uh, some of the CT results you can see. Well, maybe you can, maybe you can't. Um, if you look very closely, uh, we have air bubbles that end up entrained um, in there, uh, which is to some extent an artifact of the way that this specimens were uh, <clears throat> produced, but they're a little bit more obvious on these, uh, these slides here. Uh, we see uh, shale wall um, pieces that have um, sloughed or come off that uh, float around in here, uh, and some fractured grains, all of which are uh, contributing to a reduced porosity. Uh, we also um, see a swelling of the shale wall, uh, which is a little bit more difficult to see unless I show a whole bunch of series of images, which um, I will refrain from doing just uh, for the sake of time. Um, so this is obviously along the core length. This is uh, sliced in through the side, and you can see the distribution of propent um, here in this slide. And this is oriented vertically, so this is the same orientation that the uh, sample is in in the pressure vessel. And you can see that there is a whole bunch of um, what I'll call gravity settling um, down at the bottom of the fracture uh, that occurs when the, um, I expect at least when the specimen is unloaded. So looking at the uh, permeability <coughs> results, and I apologize for those of you who are um, going to come in and uh, we're hoping to see a whole bunch of permeability data. This is the only permeability data that's in the talk. Um, but uh, we see that the swelling uh, combination of the swelling shales and the motion of propent, fracture of propent, and um, sloughing of the shale walls uh, is, um, causes uh, quite dramatic uh, decrease in permeability through test time and then through repeated tests we see that we have, um, again, a, a fairly significant decrease in permeability um, on the order of, uh, um, uh, an order of magnitude. Um, so we're seeing plastic uh, deformation around the shales and the propent particles, um, as I sh showed in the previous image. So from this, uh, the goal is to build a mesh, a model. And what we can see is that um, it's actually very difficult to uh, develop these meshes from r realistic data. It's really easy to do it in an idealized fashion, but when we take the actual fracture, um, it takes a few number of steps to come up 
uh, with the fracture spacing and this removes all of the propens. But then we sit here and say, well, it's pretty tough to threshold it and figure out exactly what size that uh, fracture is from the CT data, um, just sort of the nature of CT data if any of you have ever worked with it before. So what we do is we go in um, and using the known particle size, uh, because it's a meshed sand or a sieved sand, um, we can uh, sort of optimize uh, what size these, fr uh, what the thresholding level should be so that we can uh, come up with an appropriate fracture size. We then mesh the fracture itself, which uh, is reasonably computationally expensive when we do the flow um, measurements on it, because uh, we've got 150,000 elements in there just um, trying to maintain three to four elements across the uh, crack volume ends up being a reasonably uh, uh, complicated uh, model. And then <coughs> perform flow tests or flow simulations on this so that we know we have a baseline um, to compare the empty crack. Um, then we have to put the particles back in. Uh, to do that, <coughs> we go through and uh, do an adaptive thresholding of the crack region, um, and then the particles are um, identified with a, a 3D watershed algorithm. I can actually, this should be a video, so you guys can, um, it just rotates, but it lets you see um, what those particles are like in 3D space. Uh, the actual geometry of the particles uh, would essentially make this um, computationally prohibitive if we were to use those. So the center of every particle is selected and then a sphere is placed in, its, um, in the same place. And that's what we have here in this model. And I don't, this one doesn't want to rotate. Um, so that's something that uh, we're still working on uh, is doing the flow simulations uh, through, this, uh, through this model, but that's uh, coming in the near future. So on to the actual, the, uh, the real experiments. What we're doing is um, an in-lab fracture and prop test. So <clears throat> we've just got a schematic of it here. We've got a pump that injects slurry. Uh, with a servo controlled uh, system to um, control the injection rates and injection pressures, um, pressure transducers that measure horizontal and vertical stresses, uh, and then that's all connected to the uh, data act system. And it's a two stage process. We first inject water. Um, you can see the flow rates there. Uh, pressurize ne uh, necessary to generate the fracture, and then we uh, follow that up with a guar. Uh, mixture that's um, doped with sand so that um, we can prop the fracture open. Um, seven minutes left. So just a little bit on the guar rheology for anyone who's interested. Um, the zero shear viscosity is listed here. It's pretty thick. Um, that's due to the uh, pumping system that we have to use. It's a syringe pump, so we uh, have to sort of make it extra thick and gooey to make sure that the um, propent maintains uh, um, well mixed and doesn't settle out of it. Uh, it is strongly shear thinning um, and there is a pronounced viscoelasticity uh, as you can see here from uh, the plot of the, um, the, uh, the cyclic, uh, cyclic rheology testing. There we go. Uh, and there's the, the shear thinning effect you can see there. Uh, it is a guar-based mixture. It's based off of um, uh, a couple of different mixtures that I've found uh, in the literature that then got a little bit tailored to our application. Um, so experimental results on uh, our first fracture test. Uh, the most important things here is, and maybe you can't see them in the audience. I know they're a little tough to see. Um, for some reason, I always have trouble finding pictures that look really good in projections, and I know that's a problem a lot of people have, but uh, anyways, you can see the fractures here along either side of this. This actually isn't shale. Uh, this is a proof of concept test that we ran on uh, a piece of granite. Um, the shale tests are coming in the very near future. Um, you can see the propent packed into the borehole, and then here's the uh, pressure and flow rate data. So you can see our the fracture pressure here drops down, flows. And then we've got um, uh, 
<clears throat> this is the uh, injection of the guar here. Uh, and because of the, the thickened guar and the uh, sand, um, we end up with a lot of uh, a much higher rise in pressure just because we're uh, losing pressure in the lines. So <clears throat> you can see we have um, the, the fracture is reasonably small in here. You can see it running through here. And then this is uh, reasonably high in the sample where the borehole uh, is still sleeved with a piece of steel. And then uh, down here at the bottom of the borehole, you can again see the fracture moving through. It does extend beyond the bottom of the borehole, not a whole bunch, but um, it is there. And the, uh, the fracture is on the order of seven thousandths of an inch thick, um, which is reasonably small, um, uh, especially for the given propens that we were using. But uh, subsequent tests, we're going to be using uh, a little bit finer propens so that we can uh, try to um, really get something in there. So here's the uh, slide of all the cool videos. Um, that's our fracture space there, uh, highlighted in blue. Uh, coming down through the middle. It's not perfect because, uh, because the um, fracture is so thin compared to the CT resolution. We end up with a couple of holes in there. Um, but it is uh, quite apparent that we have a nice fracture through the uh, sample. I'm going to try to start these at about the same time. This one, you can see the fracture coming down. So this is parallel to fracture. This one's perpendicular to fracture. You can see it move across there. I'll play that one. Uh, play that one again, so we can see it. Um, there is a couple of bifurcations. It's, it's hard to see in the movie, um, but there's a couple spots where we end up with little loops um, where the uh, crack branched and then came back together. Uh, so conclusions, uh, the CT scans have been invaluable in determining the propent interactions with the shale and with the, um, uh, the granite preliminary test. The two-stage water frack was very effective um, at generating fractures with relatively high permeability in the lab. Um, the uh, propent size obviously is extremely important. Um, and then uh, the high resolution scans uh, developing representative uh, Meshes is quite difficult, but we're uh, we're making a lot of progress with that. Um, and then uh, the flow simulations on those meshes is computationally expensive, which is why uh, nobody actually tries to model all individual propens. So uh, the goal is to uh, once we have something uh, close, we're uh, going to scale things up to a continuum model um, so that we can uh, try to. Um, implement something that uh, will be more useful for uh, industry. So any questions? Do you have any questions? Yes. Yeah. Can you um, So originally, in the scope of this project, we wanted to do uh, the, the, the elastic fracture simulation. Is that what you're asking about? Um, so the question is, is can we simulate the fracture forming in the granite um, numerically? Uh, and the problem is, is that um, our funding was cut short, and so we don't have a um, a solids modeler on the team anymore. So uh, in theory, uh, we should be able to, but it's not something that's um, in the current scope of work. <laughs>